I have such a headache because of this cheese, yeah. So many things going on, I just don't know what to do. Um, let me see if I can go over here, kind of stop this. Wahahaha, <laughs> ta-da! Maybe I can get it to stop. Seems like your sound alert isn't working. Okay, whatever. Okay. 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 Jeez. I've got a thing in here somewhere. Got a headache starting. Because so many things. I need to add propel to a water bottle. Oop. Okay, note to self, don't drop the water bottle. That sounds fantastic. Oh great, where'd my pen go? I don't know where my pen went. Oh man. Pyro, what's your day consist of? Oh, you know, just randomly blocking and banning a person that was in chat yesterday. Because I do not appreciate childlike behavior. When it comes to maturity about a conversation or, you know, just spamming the chat. Yeah. Propel. All oh, right, it didn't update that, did it? No, it didn't update that. Why would it? Done. There. There we go. Now that is fixed. Okay. Alright. Ba -da -ba -da. Got all this. Got this. Still working on the anxiety one. Mother? I think Teddy was the next one. Yeah, so I need to address that. I also need to take allergy meds because this weather is, uh, the weather is really not doing well for me. Weather changes mess with me a lot. I'm tired, very, very tired. Oh, look, you got my nose. <laughs> I don't know if there's a way to ping streams. And I dropped the pin. Boop. Okay, right. Anyone wanna kinda be in the voice chat? No. Nobody wants to be in the voice chat. 
Why would we? Oh boy. Um. I'm tired. I am tired. I feel like I should change shirts to like a tank top, but that's just me. Obtuse rubber goose. Large flies drop a shake. I go down. We going down, down in an early around. Check out what's going down for you. I'll be a number one with a bullet. I love the god come face cocking and bullet. There we go. Right. Because I have the positioning of a shrimp when I do this. There we go. Terrifier 2. Uh-uh. No, thank you. I'm not a fan of uh, clowns. Oh, I need to make sure that this settings right. Voice and video, input device, tiny bot. Yeah. Let's see if it'll pick it up. It looks to be picking it up. Good. So the channel status. Oh, my bad. I should really change that. Um, streams. Confirm. I'm gonna switch over to streams. It's kind of frozen there. Frozen computer? I didn't know that was going to be a thing today. Oh, relaunching Discord. Brilliant. Brilliant work there. Fantastic. I absolutely love what you've done with the place. Why is Discord failing? Hello? me got telegram did you know in voice chat everyone has spirit blah 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 this is very frustrating exit that why did 
freaking Discord randomly restart and shit. And change the settings. To there we go. Let's see if it'll actually pick up. There it goes. What is this? Why is there a hashtag? Oh, there's that. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. Hello! Sorry, I was a bit distracted. I am super tired. Like, I got sleep, but also I went to bed at like 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. And on top of that, woke up at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Because, well, medical places decide that they want to call at too early in the morning to wake up to. And I had just gotten three hours of sleep. And then around 11, 15, I was just like, this is not enough sleep. I'm going back to bed. And then I woke up around like five. Yeah. Yeah, I should have people joining in voice chat here in a bit. Um, there is the option that if you want to chat in voice chat, there's that option. Up to people. I decided I'd try and leave that option open for stream. Kind of allow for conversation outside of like typing for those that don't like to type kind of thing. Oh, I need to, I was doing some art earlier to try and adjust the channel thing. Um, I set like a picture for the tip and donation thing to look like a fairy version of me from Fairly Odd Parents. And then um, I did a, found a picture of the, the one, um, these are the rules kind of guy from Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> The, 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 like, have him as, like, the rule thing for my channel. Because this is, it's, um, it's funny. The rules. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, just kind of tried to update the rules because, like, people and yesterday... Uh, there was a few things that happened after you and BK left for the night. I ended up streaming for seven and a half hours. 
but there were a few things that happened to where I needed to update the rules. Um, a random person who had just created their account yesterday or this morning um, tried to message and like was chatting and kept spamming Bemis Chumgus over nine times. Um, in three different messages, and on the third message, it was on all caps. I told them, hey, you really need to stop. I don't appreciate the fat shaming. They're like, I'm not fat shaming you. And I said, well, actually you are, because Bemis Chumgus is, is used for, it's used for implication on, like, fat cats and fat memes and referring to fat things. And... Um, if you're trying to fat shame me, you're already late to the train because that train has already sailed and I already do that enough to myself. So you're, you're late to the party. Well, I don't care. Okay, well, that's your opinion and the Beamish Chungus is, 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 is considered fat shaming and I don't appreciate it. You just don't know how to have fun. No, I know how to have fun. I just, I don't appreciate you randomly spamming my chat. Well, other streamers let me come in and do that, and they welcome me with open arms. Okay, well, I'm not other streamers. This is my stream and my rules and my boundaries, and you need to respect that. That is my opinion. Well, you know what doesn't matter? Your opinion, because your opinion doesn't matter. All right. You're going to act like a child, you're going into timeout because you're going to be treated like a child if you're going to act like a child. So you're in timeout. And basically his response was, I am warning you, you sack of fuck, okay? You need to explain to me what I did wrong so that I understand, you whining bitch. And I'm just like... <sighs> Oh. Okay. First off, this is my chat. This is my stream. You don't get to come in here and demand that things go your way. This is my stream, and if you don't like that, there are several other streamers out there that I am sure you would love to be in their stream. Because my stream is not a place for harassment, bullying, or fat shaming, fat phobia, or anything like that. Nor is it a place for you to randomly spam the chat. Well, you just don't get humor. You don't know how to take jokes. No, I know how to take jokes. And a lot of my followers here on tic on Twitch find me funny. They, they love my humor. I have a good sense of humor. What you did was not a good sense of humor. Yeah, you saw my post on the Discord. Yeah, so that, that was what happened after everyone left around... Uh, that happened around, like... I want to say 3 to 4 a.m. Central Standard Time. Let me check. I'm too tired for this shit. <laughs> Let's see. Ah. It was at almost 3 in the morning. So yeah, I was not, I was not having it. So way after I left. Yep. Like, I was here, there was maybe me and the the view count said two people, then it came into, like, four people when he showed up. And I I was just like, okay, so I have four viewers at two in the morning. That's that's odd, but okay. Um, not something I'm used to, but uh, whatever. Like, I, I did not appreciate that kind of behavior, and I am not going to be tolerating that kind of behavior. Like, I know that, yes, as a streamer, you can be nice to people that come in, and you can be friendly and all that stuff, but there's a moment you have to set a limit for yourself. You have to kind of draw a line, set a boundary, and tell yourself that... I'm not going to be having this kind of behavior. I'm not going to be having people just randomly come in and do what they want and, like, basically be an asshole with with no 
consequence. Like, you choose to be an asshole, there's a consequence. Negative actions and negative behaviors have negative consequences. And his his question to me was, was it worth putting me in a timeout for, for you to, like, realize there was a misunderstanding? And I said, yeah, it was worth putting you in timeout because you at least knew there was a consequence. So yeah, like, do I feel bad about pe putting people in timeout or kicking people from, like, stream chats? Yes, I, I do feel bad about that. But I cannot let myself be walked over by people who are just going to keep repeating offenses or keep trying to find things that are going to get on my nerves or troll troll me at like three in the morning. I'd, I'm not going to let people just get away with that. So I have to put my foot down when it comes to behavior like that from those type of people. What was I going to do? That makes sense. Yeah. I just, I cannot, for the life of me, stand when, when people decide, you know what sounds like a fantastic thing? Harassing a random streamer at 3 in the morning because I have nothing better to do with my life than be an asshole. Like, that's, that's not okay. Like, do you have nothing better to do? Shouldn't you be studying in school or something? Shouldn't you be, like, working or, you know, maybe sleeping since it is 3 in the morning here? Like, you know there are better things to do than harass someone or troll someone and waste time like that and make yourself out to be an ass instead of a good person? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get why people gotta be dumb. Then again, I, I kind of understand because they're human, and humans have flaws, so. Just dumb, dumb, dumb things that make my brain go, what the fuck is wrong with people? Like, yes, I was still streaming, and I was trying to finish up the pages and stuff, and you all had left and stuff, and yeah, I like socializing and being random and entertaining you all. And that's, that's great, but, like, after everyone leaves, my brain's like, oh no, there's no one to socialize with. Now I can decompress and not have to worry about, like, trying to talk to people. And then random person comes in after I'm, like, trying to calm down and settle down from socializing and goes, hey, you're fat, just kind of thing. And I'm just like, I'm going to stab the bitch at 3 a.m. <laughs> like, I freaking... Mm, Ah, I wanna be a king. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. It's the bewitching hour. Everything that could go wrong will go wrong at this time. Aha, uh -huh, you think so? <laughs> Life. Here, let me throw someone in your chat. What the fuck? What the fuck? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like... People could be doing so much more, like, productive productive things in chat other than harassing the streamer that they don't even know. Like, that there are things people could be doing that, that would be much more meaningful with themselves than, than to troll people. That's, that's my opinion. Like, you, you have nothing better to do than to be an immature little kid about a situation and troll someone. That's really mature for your age. Like, that's great. Like, I can understand if the person's, like, eight years old, nine years old, and trolling people, because, hey, that's childlike behavior. But if you are a grown adult, and you you have nothing better to do than to troll someone online because you feel that is so appropriate, please do something with yourself in a good manner. Just learn, maybe... Maybe learn manners, maybe learn that that is not acceptable behavior for a adult to do. Like, I, I do not particularly understand why people are 
our people. That that is that is my take on that. I don't understand why people are people. That that's where I'm going with that. It's like, yeah, I love people. You love people? Yeah, I love people when they're not being assholes. <laughs> oh, so like never. I didn't say never. I, I do love people, but like when they're when they're not being assholes. When are people not assholes? When they're decent people. Like they when they're decent people, then they're not assholes. And yes, there are some decent people out there. There there are. But like finding them, it just kind of it's a random like roulette game basically. You can find good people and you can find bad people, but more so than often, you're going to have to basically take a Russian roulette with it and kind of be like, "All right, am I going to find a bad person? Am I going to find a good person? Let's take a chance." Like, I don't know why it is hard for people to understand how common or human decency works. Like, yes, I, I get it. Some people don't have the human decency thing. But, god dang! Why? Why, Bobby, why? <laughs> Dang it, Bobby. Dad, I've switched to not doing propane. Oh, tell me it's a lie, son. Tell me it's a lie. Dad, I've decided to become a comedian. Oh, this America's really going down here. Mm -hmm. Puck his hand. I uh, know that's probably not the best, but like, yeah. I don't know if this is going to have the proper things going on. No, it does. Okay. Like, I don't know what your opinion is on the whole situation that happened last night and how the person, like, talked to me, but, like, I would like to know your opinion. Or what you would have done in that situation. Because, like, one of my friends was saying that um, it's an insta-ban for them. Like, it would have been an insta-ban. I probably would have talked shit about them and then banned them if it went too far. That's fair. I just, for me, people know how I am. Like, most people are like, oh, that's an insta ban. Oh, I would have just completely banned that person because they, they were warning you, kind of thing, blah, 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 blah. 
but people know how I am as a person. Like people who frequent my streams and stuff, they know how, how I am as a person. And I'm just not the type to instantly ban someone unless there is a, a probable reason to ban someone. Like a decent reason to ban someone. Like if they were being, say, anti-Semitic or like super gay phobic or whatever or like telling me to die yeah that that's an instant ban if they were like repetitively spamming the chat i would time them out but for me people know how i am as a person and i try to give chances ah uh, okay I, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt at first Hoping maybe, maybe they'll be decent people. Maybe give them a chance and hope that they'll, they'll behave. Huh. I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, Alex is lurking. Oh well. I know you don't particularly like the the what was it called? The one style that this is. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I forgot the name of it. I know you don't like this style, but I'm, I'm doing another thing for the little thing down there. You lurking. Why'd you lurking? What's a grifter? Hello? 
Are you? I can't hear you. Hold on. Let me adjust something real quick. Is it this one? Or is it like this one? Hello? Wait, no, it's not that. Shit. Um, output device needs to be the headset. Hello? I don't know what's going on. Uh, is it this one? Or is it the output? I think it's the input. Is it? Yes, there it goes. I found it. I found it. Yay. Da 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 da. <laughs> Just joking. Oh, I, I, I ducked in for a moment, not realizing my phone tried to sync to my car's Bluetooth instead of my headset. Ah, uh, okay. So that's why that's why I had to bounce out for a second. Oh, uh, it's fine. Um, I'm not sure if people are able to hear you on stream or not. I don't know. Um, just in case, that's why I, I had know. like this sensor thing. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know what a grifter is. A grifter. Oh goodness. I'd have to look up the actual definition. Is there a context for it? Or um, Alex said that she doesn't like um, Butch Hartman's um, cartoon style because he's a grifter. Uh, okay. the, the designer... In... Sorry. The designer for Fairly Odd Parents. Ah. Uh... Grifter, according to uh, Oxford Dictionary, a person who engages in petty or small-scale swindling. I, I, okay, so, um, I know I'm gonna sound like an uneducated American here, um, <laughs> I don't know what a swindling is. Um, basically, like, very small-scale scamming kind of stuff. Okay. Like, not a not providing exactly as offered things like that okay like they so they still provide services but they may not be exactly what was initially offered okay so alex says uh um basically he built his career on the back of taking credit for others work ah uh, yeah that makes sense well then, I, I guess it makes sense for people to try and do art in uh, that style to kind of, you know, uh, basically he have no right over it. Yeah. Like, if I want to draw in that style, then it, to me, it's fair because it's a cute style, but also just um, shows that he's nothing special. Because everyone, anyone that wanted to, could draw in that style. Yeah. I mean, art styles aren't necessarily. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> exactly imitate somebody else's art style. But I'm no, all I... for using other people's art styles as inspiration and such. Yeah, I get that. Like, for me. Everyone has their own style, and you, you get your own style artistically eventually, like, you understand what your style is. For me, it's taken me a while to understand what my style is, and for years I just kind of strayed away from doing any type of fan art style. Like, I, I, I didn't even attempt to do any kind of fan art for, for years, because I'm like, no, if I do fan art, people are going to think I'm, I'm copying the artist, or I'm... I'm be insulting the original artwork kind of thing and then I saw like at conventions and stuff all the art that other people have done that is considered fan art and I'm like wow these artists are like super amazing at this and I've never done this before but they their work is so cool looking and then I attempted it in 2018 and I didn't um Um, sorry, I'm responding to someone. Uh, no worries. I, I tried to do fan art in 2018 by doing, like, a um, Spider-Man hanging from a ceiling type thing and Deadpool, like, a chibi version of both of them. And Deadpool, like, 
bouncing up in the air to Spider-Man saying tacos and holding a taco. And and I I tried to do that, and at the time that I did it, I was like, yeah, I did fan art. This, this is great. And then I saw everyone else's fan art in Artist Alley, and I'm like, oh no, this is not great. <laughs> and and that was how I met one of my friends at Artist Alley. Was the first time I ever did at Artist Alley. I never attempted to do Artist Alley ever again. Um. Just, I didn't sell anything. I raised, like, $5 for the Trevor Project at the time. And just, it was it was my first time ever doing Artist Alley in 2018. And I didn't know what to bring, what to expect. So I brought a lot of my own original art. And, and yeah. that was not something people were looking for at the time. And... I, I was selling at a booth with um, a friend I had at the time, uh, Fangirl's Closet. Um, I had, she goes by Lilo, um, but I had, oh, okay. I, think I, have heard that. I, she unfriended me because I was friends with her ex. Because uh... her ex is non-binary and stuff and she's exclusively lesbian, so I don't know. But I I tried to do fan art, and she sold so many Scalemate plushies at the same booth with me. And, like, she was selling out of all of her plushies, and I, I didn't make any sales. Like, I, she had her stuff set up with me, and she made so many sales, and I didn't sell anything. And I even, like, whole, I even went through the process of trying to do shrinky dink phone charms and stuff and like at the time I was just starting out trying to learn how to do stuff that sells and I I even tried to do like um the perler bead art with like magic potion type perler beads and like the little pixel art type things I tried doing that those didn't sell um I tried doing like um Oh, is it? I, I tried doing, um, learning how to make buttons, but because it was so close to the convention and I was con crunching with art stuff and trying to come up with art that might go over well, I never got to make any buttons or pins that I had planned. And I had over so many designs that I wanted to do and over 500 buttons I could have made. But at the time, I couldn't figure out how my machine worked. So I had zero oh. buttons or pins for the event. And I was just like, well, <laughs> I'm going to just try to, you know, do my best and sell what I can. <laughs> but I know that pins and buttons go over really well at conventions. Yeah. And then I eventually learned how to use my button press, and so now I do buttons and stuff for art events here, and those go over really well. Everyone loves buttons and pins. Yeah. But, um, yeah. like... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, but, like, I, I just... It took me a while to understand what works for people, like, what people like, and what they're looking for specifically but for me when I started learning how to make like plushies and stuff and all that I I eventually finally understood like what people look for and currently I I have a ton of options that I do and like the cookie cats the choco bun the choco frogs and the strawberry buns like the Steven Universe theme type stuff the but like different variations and all that things but um, if I had done that kind of stuff, the stuff that I'm doing now, and done that back then at that convention, I would have done so much better and would have done so well. But because it was a bad experience for me, selling wise, I gave up on trying to attempt to sell anywhere. I, I just completely lost all like hope and faith in myself of ever trying to sell. And I stopped trying to sell my art, ever. And then, in 2020, I started doing furry art. <laughs> I've only been doing furry art for three or maybe four years. 
in in 2019 I started it and then 2020 really started to practice it a lot but I've come a long ways but like it took me a while to understand and learn stuff and then when I met um when I started talking to Alex after like a long time of not talking to her because she was doing she was in a relationship and um just we had gone to conventions together and she had helped with one of the maid cafes and then she started talking to me again and like talking to Neil? Huh? Are you talking no, no, to no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. Foxy. Foxy Alex. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, um, started talking to Alex again and Alex and a few friends encouraged me to keep trying to just keep on doing my art don't give up and and try branching out like doing furry art try actually doing commissions and you'll never you'll never know unless you try and people are gonna love your art you just have to find the right people because you are good at art you just need to try and get out there again and I'm like yeah but the last time I ever did anything selling art people didn't even want it they just ignored it so what what's gonna be the difference people are gonna just do the same thing that they did back then you don't know that well I just it's a it was a bad experience, and how am I supposed to know that that won't happen? Just trust us. Just, you're good at art. Give it a shot. You won't know that it'll be the exact same experience unless you, you try again. So I, I ended up trying to do furry commissions again, and then realized that people did want the art, and people loved my art. And I'm just like, well, uh, um, okay, uh, this was... Not what I expected to happen. Um, I, uh, I don't know how to respond to this. Um, I'm gonna kind of take a moment to understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm at the point that I am now in art where people, even outside of art events, recognize my art and recognize who I am. And they're just like, hey, you're that artist that makes the cookie cats and makes like all these different manta plushies and does all this stuff and makes the stickers and stuff and and does the mental health stuff. And I'm like, I, I take I take them take a moment and I go, wait, who are you again? And they're like, you know, I was at that one art event. Yes, that one art event. So descriptive. You know, you had the giant manta. You you. You, um, you did. And I'm like, oh, you're the one that adopted the giant sea pancake. Yeah. Oh, hi. What are you doing here? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm just here for the event thing that's going on and just kind of like, didn't know you'd be here. Yeah, well, someone needs a fairy somewhere. So I dressed up as a fairy. What do you want from me? <laughs> so, like, uh, yeah, that was kind of what I did. Alex said she was on call and she thought she heard her name. Yeah, I I did say your name, Alex. Um, I was telling Krillik that um, I don't know if you're wanting to go by Krillik in the the stream thing or not. Either Krillik or Jamie. Uh, Jamie said that um that uh I forgot, but I was talking about how. In 2018, I had a really bad experience trying to sell art at the convention, and then in 2019, I started talking to you again, and it was after, like, you broke up with your ex and stuff, and you you had encouraged me to try doing my art and try out furry art, and so I tried it, and then you're like, well, this is good, why don't you try doing commissions, and I kept saying that I don't know that that would ever sell because people don't want my art because I keep getting rejected by multiple people in the past, and you're, you, you had told me that um, you never know unless you try, and you don't know that people are going to reject you immediately. You have to give it a shot because you, you don't know people are different, and if you try, you, you never know who will actually want your art because your art is good, and you just have to try and get out there again. So I gave it a shot, and now people really like my art, and it just took a bit of pushing from, like, you and a few other people. 
I kind of feel that struggle, honestly. I'm not a visual artist, but I do uh, music production. But I, I see myself as not being very good at it, and I have a lot of that anxiety about ever publishing any of my work. Yeah. And getting my name out, like putting my name out there. It took me a while to try and get out there because, like, in 2012, I started doing comic strips. I, I am a comic strip artist, but I don't really post as much as I used to. I used to do a bunch of comic strips online on DeviantArt. And I... Oh, yeah, I, I did a whole Talking Cat and Girl series, um, still on Pyro. It was um, supposed to be, like, a comedy thing. And I had done that for some time, and then people were like, hey, these are really good. Why don't you try sending them to newspapers? So I tried to send them to newspapers. I was like, all right, I'm going to send these to the Washington Post. I'm going to send these to the Chicago Times. I'm going to send this to New York Times. I'm going to send this all over to these 10 different major newspaper places and, and see what they think of my comic strips because all my friends keep telling me my comics are good, my comics are funny, and they need to be seen in every newspaper. And, and people keep telling me this, so I, I try. So I never kept the rejection letters. I should have, but I never did. Um, I got rejected by each and every newspaper company. Um, every newspaper company told me, well, you see, we're looking for something more original. It, okay, it is original art. Well, we're, we're looking for something in, that's going to actually make people want to read it. Oh, okay, um, this just isn't the style we're looking for. Sorry, this is not really something we want to run at this time. Maybe in a future time we might consider this, but there's so much we have comic strip-wise right now that this just doesn't fit in. And getting that over ten times from major newspaper outlets that, that have comics worldwide, it just... It, it completely destroyed my ambition of wanting to put my comic strips out there because yeah. I, I kept getting told by friends, yeah, your comics are really good and they're funny. And then when I tried to actually apply that, I got rejected so much that my, my, my outlook on it was <laughs> my friends say I'm good, but the world says I'm bad. Everything else just rejects anything I try to put out there. So why should I even try? Why should I try to put my comics out there if people are just going to throw them away? That's kind of the fear of rejection that I have with my music, too. Like, I haven't done comic strips in a while as much. Like, I've maybe done a couple comic strips before, but I haven't done as much as I used to. I've just been focusing on like furry art, coloring books, and just all that stuff and neglected doing my comic stuff. I've done some furry comics, but I haven't done like any comics that I had originally done. Yeah. Hey Guts. Oh, Guts is in the um, Guts Zerker. Guts is in the um, chat. If you wanted to hop in voice oh. chat, gut you you could if you wanted to. We're just kind of chatting in voice chat while doing stream. Yeah, I can't look at the chat or anything just because no, it's super easy. Thing. Yeah, it's fine. I understand. Yeah. Uh, just <sighs> like I've I've had a lot of rejection in the past and. Rejection is one of those things that just, no matter who it comes from, it hurts. It hurts it really hurts. bad. It's like, I'm about to leave for work, just stopping by for a minute. Okay, no problem. I hope you have a good day at work. Good luck. Uh, but like, but like, just, it doesn't matter where the rejection is coming from for me. It's this, like, I know there's a social phobia where you have a fear of rejection, fear of people... Um, having a negative feedback, that's, that's a literal, legit phobia that is, that is common for a lot of people. I just went over oh, that yeah. in one of the, yeah, um, I just went over one of the, uh, phobia pages and anxiety pages for the book I'm working on the other day, but 
Yeah, it's it's a phobia that's common, but it's more common with like rejection sensitive dysphoria and people who have been through a lot of trauma or like traumatic things that caused them to fear rejection. Yep, I was actually about to say that's where a lot of mine is rooted in. A majority of like people's phobias, people's fears, things like that that are rooted in anxiety, they also come from trauma. Like, th that is a common factor with a lot of fears, is trauma. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that in myself. Like, for, for me, I am very much aware that a lot of my fears are rooted in trauma. Like, as a child, I was afraid of giant dogs. I was afraid of giant dogs, like the big fluffy doggies, like the big dogs that are bigger than me. I was afraid of them, like terrified yeah. of them and would run away from them. And it was just like, there is no, there is no convincing me that this dog is not going to eat me. I'm going to hide in the closet, blah, blah, blah. But, oh, yeah. um, like eventually I started getting used to bigger dogs. I'm still not entirely used to them. There's still a mild fear and concern, but I've had dogs over the year, like, German Shepherds, I've had Huskies, I've had like Golden Retrievers and stuff like that and it's like oh well these are just, I've had a dog that was part wolf and it, it's oh, it's yeah. it's like oh well these aren't these aren't necessarily bad dogs, they're, they're big dogs yes but they're not bad and then I yeah, got like they Pip look intimidating but they're not really necessarily bad dogs. They're just dogs that think they're giant lap dogs at times it's like, I am still pupper. I will get in your lap. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but... Um, um, I've got a friend with the Great Pyrenees that's exactly like that. Uh, Gut says, I've been there with having a lot of fear of rejection. I had to develop a method of repeatedly telling myself to not think about it. it sounds simplistic, but it's the simplest way of explaining. And that's a perfectly fair way if it works for you. Like, that's that works for you. Yeah. And then that's that's great. Like, for me, personally, I'm having to unlearn that I am not bad and that I am good and kind of thing. It, it, is, it is a process, and when you have a lot of repetitive trauma, it is definitely a process of having to unlearn things that have been basically drilled into you through fear and trauma. Like, it is, it is yeah. one of those things that you are like, I know I should be able to not think like this, but for some reason I can't get past it kind of thing. Yeah, I have a lot of low self-esteem and such from, yeah, a lot of childhood trauma, but I'm working past it, and that's been helping me a lot, building confidence, working yeah. on getting my name out there as a DJ, as an audio engineer, and as a music producer. I am trying to get my art out there, and like, I never really wanted to actually own a business. <laughs> that wasn't my intention with my art. I didn't plan to own a business. And it just, I started it out as a Christmas art booth in 2021, having a friend help me with it. I had Alex helping me with the Christmas booth, and people loved what I did. And she's like, see, people do love what you, what you do, and people have bought several things from you. It's not that you're bad. People just don't know your art yet. You have to get out there and put yourself out there for people to want your art. I'm like, yes, but that is so much work. Can't someone do it for me? <laughs> like, uh, like, I know that sounds bad, but like, it is a lot of social effort to get out and go to each art event and try and be around people. If that makes sense. It really is. And, like, it I'm really trying. Is. I'm trying, but it's... People will come to me and ask me, so how do you run a business? How do you do all this business stuff? And I'm like, look, I never planned to run a business, okay? I I just wanted to sell art. Like, I didn't plan to just, like, have a big thing I was doing every single month. I didn't plan to, to make a ton of things like and keep making a ton of things that would sell off i i just 
I just was like, oh, this looks like a neat thing to learn. Oh, I have now made 20 of these. Oh, okay. You know what? This looks like a neat thing to learn. Let's let's learn this. Oh, I've made 100 of these. Oh, no. Um, You know what sounds good? I should probably sell these. <laughs> like, like, it's like... You're reminding me of my old childhood hobby days when I would, like, when I tinkered in, like, carpentry, calligraphy, piano, pipe organ. I play piano. Different stuff. I'm rusty, but I still have my old Yamaha Aria, so I want to get it back up and running and play again. I play by ear. I can't read music. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how I was, too. Like, I, I would play off sheet music to learn a piece, and then I would, uh, because I couldn't actually sight read and actively play simultaneously, I would memorize it and then adapt it. Like, make my own arrangement of it. Yeah, that, that, that's fair. Like, I just, like, a lot of times it wasn't my intention to try and, like, become who I am via, like, being a business. I just wanted to share my art with people, show people I relate to them and that I understand what they're going through, but show them a way to cope with that mental health topic or diagnosis through art and give an art outlet. Yeah. And, like, I give several different outlets with everything I make, and people are just like, how do you do all this stuff? Uh, ADHD, anxiety, and uh, just keeping myself busy so the trauma thoughts don't try to unalive me. <laughs> yep. I feel that. Yeah, that's kind of kind of in a similar vein to what I do with my DJing. Like, I love to tell stories, and I love to bring joy to audiences with my set. Yeah, like, I don't... I I don't like being the center of attention, if that makes sense. I don't use my yeah. phone. I let my mixes speak for themselves. Yeah, and that's that's uh. fair. Like I, I like to be able to tell people why I do things, when I do things. When it comes to like art events, people will ask, "Well, why do you make this? Why did you do this? How did you come around to making this?" And I'm like, "Well, I like certain textures, and these textures feel better, yeah. and so I incorporate those into there because I know there are people with similar issues. So if there are things that have a texture that I like, there might be things that people like as well. So that is how I come up with all the like the sensory stuff that I do." Yeah, I will. I will go to a fabric store and I will hand pick out the the fabrics that I use, the textures that I use. I hand pack. I yeah. hand pick out and I will touch every fabric I can to get the right texture for each idea that I have. I will personally personalize that texture by trying to feel the right texture for what my idea is. And a lot of people don't realize that that I have to figure out what will work for this. Yeah. I put too much thought into myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I do the same thing when I'm making music. Um, like, I, I engineer all my own synthesizers from the ground up. For, for the same reason. Like, I, I want very specific sounds to get across specific emotions or moods. While I'm telling a story with my music. The feeling of imposter syndrome is real. Yeah, that is, really the, is. That, that is, like, it doesn't matter how well I do on an art piece or I, I get things published and they're available online or I, I am known for being a published coloring book artist or I'm known for being a professional furry artist. Like, it doesn't matter how professional the title is how professional my work seems there's always that feeling of well i know it's considered professional because i'm getting paid but if you look over here at this person's work their work is like uber amazing in comparison to my shit and and it's like but you worked for like two weeks on that project i don't give a fuck did you see what they did theirs is amazing like there's this there's this so over amazing okay but so is yours no, 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 no. You don't understand. They, yeah. they, they're, like, famous, famous. I'm mildly famous. I'm not, like, famous. Fa like, do you see that? You've got to believe in yourself. Do you see that? <laughs> like, that is, yeah. that is, 
that is what happens with me is like I will be doing great at an art project and get confident and they'll be like all right so what's everyone else doing on the art spectrum today and look at other people's art and go holy shit they look amazing looks at my current work yeah. god damn it <laughs> yeah I feel that so hard like I I have uh... I do appreciate other people's art. I appreciate everyone else's art, and I love seeing other people's art. But like, then I see my art, and I'm like, why doesn't mine? What? What? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing? Why doesn't this turn out the yeah. way it needs to? Like, look at how theirs turned out. There was there's this like they just cranked that out in like a day or two and just made it look like Picasso, like or or Van Gogh or shit. And I'm just like, well, yeah. Uh, looks at current project well you know we tried time to scrap the idea <laughs> yeah. i'm like, listening but i gotta mute for a sec picking up okay an order. just like i just uh i i don't try to be insecure about my art and stuff but there are times where i notice everyone else's art being so amazing and i feel like I'm not doing enough, or I'm not doing good enough, or I should be doing better, and I know it's not the best self-talk to have for yourself. I, I understand that. It's just, it's hard, and it's, it's, it's just, I know it's, it's an anxiety-based trauma thing, but like, a trauma-based anxiety, but it's just, it's hard, and I hate it. I hate it. Because, like, a lot of people, they tell you, you should hype yourself up. If you want to actually get better at art, you have to hype yourself up. And then eventually you will see how good you are. And I'm like, hyping myself up is hard enough. Okay? Hyping myself up is super hard enough. Okay? I'm, I'm trying, but then I get very, very discouraged. And, like, I'm all in support of supporting other artists and, like, being being able to understand that other artists are going to have good work. Ah, okay. Thanks for the good wish on the stream, Guts. Like, I know that there are good artists out there and there are a lot of really good artists out there and that yes I have friends that are going to commission artists that aren't me and I, I, I like that other artists are getting commissions and that people do good enough work that people want to commission them and that's that's great but sometimes like I get this insecurity that well they didn't want to commission me so obviously I'm not what they're looking for I'm not the style they're looking for I'm not the art they want so what am I doing wrong like I I kind of have this split because I understand that people like other people's art and I get that but at the same time I'm like but I'm working really hard and I, I want to be able to get commissions too and I I don't know what I'm doing wrong and I know that's not the best way to think about that. And you should be excited that they got a new art piece and that, hey, they commissioned an artist that does really good work and look how fantastic it looks. And I'm like, yeah, I can see how fantastic it looks, but also, why isn't my art that good? And it's, it's, it's a negative mindset I have at times because just insecurity issues and just also rejection stuff with the newspaper stuff that happened just I've got insecurity around like my art not being good enough I'm back now yeah I feel that and like no matter how much people tell me you're that my art looks good or my art looks amazing I'm like yes but it it could be so much better and I could do so much better I, I can be better I can I can do better like the, like an insecure like child that is responding to an abusive parent just I can do better I swear I can I can do better I I can I can be better and yeah that that's something I still struggle with as well is changing that from beating myself up to um, more of a mindset of using it to improve myself like, I am trying to improve my art and improve myself, and 
I'm trying to get myself in the mindset of, hey, even if my art isn't that good, eventually it might be, but I need to understand that everyone is different and my art may not be their art, may not be where they are right now, but I have to give myself time. Everyone progresses at their own pace on their own time. And so, yes, my art isn't going to be the exact same as everyone else's and that's okay because it's where I am right yeah. now and it doesn't have to be where they are right now because it's my own art and it's my own time that I'm doing exactly. it in. And, and I'm trying to get my, journey. I'm trying to get myself to be like, okay, I understand. But the little voice in the back of my head kind of goes, but I can be yeah. better. I just got to prove that I'm better. <laughs> like yeah. it's, I, I struggle with that so much too. It's very hard because like growing up, I had this, very hard reality of my mom always basically saying you can be better you can do so much better why aren't you doing your best why aren't you why aren't you doing your best why aren't you doing what you can do i know you can do better kind of thing and i'm just like mm, and then there's the little voice in the back yeah. of the head that needs to shut the fuck up mm. yeah. like it's it's i have similar stuff from my family even to this day super rough and i hate it because i wish that and it's even so hard to tune it out it is very hard to tune it out because it's like no matter how hard i'm trying i just want to be able to recognize hey you're doing great but instead i've got the voice in the back of my head that kind of just goes oh wow you actually tried something wow now make it better what that but it is good yeah. it's not good enough I, th th I spent hours on this yeah and you should have done it in two but but I'm I'm putting yeah. all my effort into this. Yes, but do you see what someone else cranked out in 45 minutes? They did a whole piece that was fantastic. Look at you. Two hours, really? Well, I mean, two hours is good for my first time, really. Like, I, I'm trying. Yeah. yeah, but you're not trying hard yeah, enough. You gotta mute again. Still listening, though. It's like, bitch, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. This is bullshit. Stop it. I just want to, like, tell the voice in the back of my head, just shut the fuck up. I am doing my best. Like, if I could just sit there and basically tell the voice in the back of my head that it's basically my mom's voice that I'm doing my best and shut the fuck up, I, I would totally tell it to shut the fuck up, but that is extremely hard to do, even though, like, I wish I could. And I know that for some people going through, like, trauma therapy and stuff, they have to eventually tell the voice in the back of their head that, like, hey, I'm not what you think I am. I'm my own person, and you need to listen to me because I, I know who I am and what I've done, and you're not helping me. You're, you're hurting me, and I don't appreciate that. Yeah. But I'm not at that point yet. I haven't gone through trauma therapy yet. <laughs> I honestly just got started recently, like two weeks ago, with a really good therapist I recommend. Yeah, uh, I, if you'd I, like, I can send you details and DMs later. That's that's fine. I've got I've got a therapist currently, but the therapist just basically goes, "Look, therapy is your own journey, and you you have to find the answers yourself. I'm not here to give you the answers. You've got to do the work yourself in order for you to be able to heal and all that stuff. And so I can't tell you what you need to heal. I can't tell you what you need to fix. I can only guide you through this and hope that you understand. And I'm like. Are you fucking kidding me? I need a helping hand. I need someone to hold my hand through this. This is bullshit. I'm very traumatized. You can't do this to me. Yeah. Like, do I wish that the mental health care system was a lot better? Yeah, I do. Like, absolutely. Like, it's 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 dumb, but at the same it really time. Is. My therapist for the past 12 years, all different therapists have basically told me, we don't feel comfortable starting trauma therapy with you. Okay, but why? Well, um, you've been through a lot. And if we tried to do trauma therapy, uh, well, you would mentally break and there would be no, no being able to fix that. Like you, you would 
have a psychotic break and you would never be the same. And I'm just like, oh, so you're, you're saying that it would break me. Well, it's not necessarily that it would break you. It's just it would be so much for you to handle in that moment that we need to make sure you're ready to do that whenever you do yeah. get to do that. Because you, you literally have been through way too much for someone your age. And trying to process that all right now, like that, that's asking for you to have a breakdown that is well past our capability. And I'm like... But I want to heal. I want to get better. I want to fix this stuff. I want to start healing the trauma that is there. Why won't you let me? Yeah. You're not ready. What do you mean I'm not ready? You have shown time and time again that you are unable to cope with just processing what happened last week. You are unable to show that you can handle dealing with daily stress. And I'm like, I manage... I manage. I'm still alive. I haven't offed myself. That doesn't yeah. matter. You you need to be able to handle this without breaking down. Okay, but breaking down is inevitable when it comes to processing stuff. When you're processing trauma, you're going to break down. It's a lot for anyone to process. Exactly. That doesn't matter. You have to be able to handle it without breaking down to a point that you might need hospitalized. <sighs> yeah, but hospitals are there to help you. It and it doesn't matter. We don't want you up in the hospital almost every every week because oh you process this, oh you process that. You need to be able to process this in a healthy manner. And right now you're not gonna be able to process this in a healthy manner. We are worried about you breaking down and needing us to call someone. That's fair, but also I really wanna just get rid of the trauma stuff and heal. Healing would be great. Please. I don't want to feel like a burden anymore. <laughs> like, I just... Uh, just so much stuff I'm trying to do. And no matter how much effort how much I'm trying, it always feels like it's not enough or like I am not doing what I should be doing or that I'm just becoming a burden to everyone around me. Okay, this is not how I intended for the conversation to go with shit. Okay, cool. Just, just, that's good. I just want to get to a point where I don't feel like I'm always a burden for everyone. I just don't want to feel like that anymore.
I'm tired of feeling no matter how much effort I put in, no matter what I do to try and cope, that it's not enough. Alright, I'm back, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I'm sorry the conversation brought you down a bit. Uh, it's, it's fine. It sometimes happens. It's just kind of something that's bound to happen with any conversation I end up having. I feel that. I feel like we're both, like, empaths. Yeah. That's part of why I, I don't... I definitely am. That's part of why I don't currently do, like, phlebotomy and stuff. Like, in Arkansas, you don't have to be certified. I you know. don't have to be certified. Uh -huh. And I, I'm just like, I, what? And I found that out when I was getting blood drawn at a clinic. Because the guy, I yeah. am like, yeah, I used to get certified in phlebotomy in college. I just wasn't state certified. And he's like, yeah, I wasn't state certified either. And I'm looking down at him, drawing my blood, going, huh? What, what do you mean you weren't state certified? Well, yeah, I did military training with IVs and doing blood work and stuff over there as an army nurse. And uh, was never state certified. Then I worked in a couple hospitals in the States. And uh, yeah. I've been working in this one ever since, and I'm just like, so you were never, like, actually cer certified. Yeah, but I'm good at my job. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You weren't, you weren't cert, okay, but I'm not certified. Yeah, but you could still work in a place like this if you wanted to. You don't have to be certified. So, I've been trained in phlebotomy, and I could, I could work here. Yeah, if you wanted to, yeah. you could literally apply, and you could, people need nurses and need phlebotomists, so you could get a job. And I'm like, I'm going to have to think yeah, on I, that one. I used to be state certified um, because it, it made it easier to get into the field initially. But I let my license expire after the first two years because, yeah, Arkansas doesn't require you to have a license. Like, you and can, by that you point, can I get had two years. You can get state certified in Arkansas, but all it does is guarantee you a higher pay. Yeah, a little bit higher pay. A uh, little bit of preference in job applications initially. Yeah. But, I mean, by the time I had let my license lapse, I had two years of experience in geriatric care under my belt. Um, and you could ask any of my coworkers from back then, I was the go-to phlebotomist if somebody couldn't get a draw. Yeah. Because I, I knew so many tr tips and tricks, I could find veins that nobody else could. And I could do it painlessly. Like, for me, when I trained for phlebotomy, I was initially in um, college training for phlebotomy. And yes, I did work in a lab once, but like... I just didn't pursue it as a career because when I started college and was training for medical field and going into nursing, I did phlebotomy because EMT wasn't available for me to take the course. So they're like, oh, but yeah. you'd be the only person taking EMT courses and we can't just, you know, teach one person. So we, we need you to like take a different course. Okay. How about phlebotomy? Sure. You can take the phlebotomy course. So I, I, I get in the phlebotomy class and I get there and I talk to the teacher and stuff because she's like all right now class if there's anything you want to know before we start the course and stuff well, i'm just going to explain that this is a medical course this does get you certified in this at the end of the course and there is a state certification at the end of this course so i'm letting you know that this course is going to be a medical class and i'm like okay cool cool does anyone have any questions so i raise my hand then i'm just like okay so i uh i have a question what exactly do we learn medically in this class? Oh, well, um, we're going to be working with needles. We're going to be working with biohazards. We're going to be working with uh, pathogens and all that other stuff and what people would do in a lab and, like, drawing blood and needles. And I'm just like, 
Okay, um, raise my hand again. Yeah, what else? Um, so, uh, hypothetical question here. <laughs> hypothetical. Uh, what if, um, what if, say, the person who's training to do this, uh, ha has a very big phobia or fear of needles? The teacher looks at me point blank and goes, if you have a fear of needles, you need to exit that door, go down the hall, and pick a different career path to choose. Because you cannot be afraid to do people's blood and needlework when you are in this line of work. You have to be confident and trust your ability to save someone's life. And I'm just like, great! Fantastic! Um, I'm, uh... I'm and I'm just like, that's great. Uh, so I have a fear of needles. Do you need to walk out the door? N no, I am not walking out the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this class. I'm going to pass it, be an A-plus stick, and be fantastic at this. And you're going to see that I am really good at this. And she's like, okay, well, uh, if you're not, then you know there's always other career paths out there. And so... <laughs> I, I take the class and I get the vein every time. I'm I'm not bad at it. No one ever feels me. I never bruise anyone. And like, I just, no one ever feels me. And people ask, did you already stick me? And I'm just like, yeah, it's already going. I've already done it. They're like, whoa, really? I'm like, yeah, it was painless. Yeah. That That's how it's supposed to be. But I didn't feel that. You're not supposed to. Why would you want to? No one wants to feel this. I don't want to feel this. And I'm the one doing this to you. <laughs> It's because everybody's got the expectation that it's going to hurt. Like, it doesn't have to hurt. Sure, if you're, like, getting a blood donation done, it might hurt a little bit because that's a bigger needle. But, like, ah. Yeah. Like, like, if I'm using, like, say, a 22-gauge or 23-gauge butterfly, yeah, it should be painless. Like, it, it should be painless for people. And that's what people don't realize is that if your lab tech is sticking you, it should not hurt. If it is hurting, like, immensely... They are not doing their job correctly. You need to find yeah. someone else. Um, yeah. But I was if good it at it. Too much. Tell them. Ask for somebody else. Like I was good at my job, and <laughs> I was, I was good at what I did. And like at the end of the course, I didn't pass the state certification, and and my teacher, she she looks at me and goes, "Are you sure you don't want to retake the state certification because?" We we could we could like have you retake the state certification so you could work in the career field. And I'm like, no. See, um, here's my next question for you: Is the state certification the second time covered by the college course and the payment from the college course class? Well, no. The second time you have to take the state certification by yourself, you have to pay out of pocket because we'd only pay for you to take it once so that you pass hopefully the first time. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. So, so I would have to pay out of pocket. And how much is that? At the time, it was 195 Now it's $225. Um, yep. But I'm like, yeah, so I'm not made of money. And I can't afford that. So I'm, I'm just going to kindly decline the offer of retaking the test. But if I ever in the future decide I want to... I will consider it, but at this moment, I'm going to have to say no, and, uh, you know, like you said at the beginning of the class, pick a different career path. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I like, like a decade of the CNA as well, like and I that, loved it. I loved my residence. That was but my, it was so mentally like, taxing. that was the most petty thing I could ever do to a teacher, was just like, yeah. I could retake this, and I'm good at this, and I told you I would be, but since I'm having to pay out of pocket, like you said, different career path, right? <laughs> right. But, it's um... definitely a useful skill set to have. It is, and I am considering going back out into the field again when I can get my health issues fixed. Because I need to be able to get a lot of stuff addressed medically first to where I'm able to yeah. handle being able to physically be in the medical field but yeah. also I've caught wind of some um, phlebotomist open job openings in some local clinics here I also know um, of some um, currently there are some here in Rogers and 
I'm I'm thinking on it, but I'm waiting till after everything kind of dies down with the lawyer stuff. Yeah. But also, I just I'm torn. Like medically, doing phlebotomy that'd be something I'd be good at. But I would be so nervous to hurt people because I don't want to hurt people. I'm empathetic, and if I see someone in pain, I'm just gonna be like, "God damn it, I can't do this. I can't do this. I know I need to be able to do this, but I can't do this if they are gonna be in pain." And I know that the pain is just kind of an outcome of everything that happens, but like it's just this thing you just kind of go, "But I feel bad," and I know I'm helping them yeah. and you're making them feel better, but initially just. Why you gotta look at me like that? Why you gotta look at me like that? God damn it! Why? I'm having to look at you. This this is not fair. Yeah. Like, I get it. That's just something to be expected, and you can't be like, what's the word, fidgety about that. But just pain and people and empathy and like, I am having to just kind of. I'm torn between doing either that or going into art therapy and being an art therapist. Yeah. Because like everyone keeps like saying, Hey, you should, you should do like art therapy. Cause you're, you're good at art and you use it for an outlet for therapy and stuff. So why not become an art therapist and help people through art and therapy that way? And I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, like, I don't know. I, I I think it's a good idea in theory to try, but, like, I don't know if I'm mentally ready to try to help people in that sense. Like, 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 you know, like, yeah. go, go to a, go to an office that um you have to go to each day in person and have to actually like talk to people in person and and be there in person and then like come across a ton of people in person and then address their issues in person and then you get like 25 to 30 people a day for every day of the week for like like almost constantly like yeah, I just that's that's a lot for me to think about because it's like oh yeah you know I could technically could do that but also people and 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 again people nothing against people but just people <laughs> like I understand that people are people and that I shouldn't be too opposed to that, but like mm, having to deal with people. It, it sounds like a lot for me. Like streaming is one thing where I'm able to handle people on stream, but like people in person just people just 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 people just i don't know what it is but just just i i don't mind people in stream i don't mind people like that i don't mind like all that stuff but like in person it, it i can it's handle different. yeah i can handle it sometimes but then when it comes to like I've had people that have been very ableist that are like, oh, well, you do art events and you handle people there. Why can't you work an actual job? Well, art events, I handle those once a month, not every day of the week, 24-7, 365 a year, because yeah. um, I'm having to prep mentally for one event per month, one event, not 30 different art events. God dang, if I had 30 art events in one month, I think I would just... Um, Exit stage left. Yeah. I just, I don't yep. think that would uh, be applicable for me. Like, I, I would look at that and go, oh, look, 30 art events. Oh, dear God, 30 art events. I don't have enough shit for that. Holy shit. No, not That's happening. How like, my, like, That's how I am with my convention bookings as well. I can only do like three or four conventions a year. Otherwise, I get overwhelmed. Like,. <sighs> I can understand, um, just, 
I can understand people wanting to be around people. I don't understand that completely, but I, I can understand why people would do that. It's just the, the whole idea of, hey, look, a person, and now another person, and now another person, and now another person. See, if it's yeah. an art event for one day, I can understand that, that happening and there being that many people. And, like, that's that's normal. That's a normal thing. But, like, if I have to do that every single day... I'm just going to be burnt down. I'm going to burn, be burnt out after like just two or three because I have to have a period of time to ground myself and feel like, okay, I am I am safe. I am good. I am able to just kind of chill and decompress and, 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 and not have to deal with people. But if I'm having to exactly. do that every single day... I am going to break. I'm going to go, ah, oh, yes, yeah. I just, I, like, day one, I just dealt with a lot of people. I'm in a lot of pain. This was exhausting. Wake up the next day. By the way, you have got to go through that again today. Huh? No. No. No, I, no, no. Um, uh, why? Well, it see, seems <laughs> here, one. it seems here that she, you signed up for this 30 days in a row. I had did what now? Was I on a manic break or something? Maybe, maybe manic prank pixie uh, mania episode of of don't do this because uh, that's what it's sounding yeah. like. Do, was I was I disassociating and maybe like alternate thing? How I feel yeah. working a job. Well, what do you mean, like having to deal with people? Alex was saying this is how I feel working a job. Yeah, like just I don't know what it is, but like I can understand, like I can understand interacting with people for a short period of time, for like say maybe maybe four to six hours, eight hours max. I can understand that, but there are people who choose to interact with people constantly. And on top of that, have children that they have to constantly interact with. 24-7, 365 a year. And I'm just like, um, wow. so I can understand babysitting for my cousin for like a weekend for like four to six yeah. hours. That's fine. It's a one-year-old. That's not too bad. But if I had to do that every single day and be a parent, I think that that kid would no longer have a parent and I would be in some facility somewhere questioning why I became a parent. Yeah, that that's, that's where I, I feel I would be. I, I would just be like, hey, by the way, you know that one thing that you said you would never do, you know, becoming a parent? Well, now you're a parent. Apparently, I am not. <laughs> but um, just, oh, I have to get up and do this again? I'm already exhausted. That's what Alex said. Yeah. I'm just like, that's yeah. That's how I feel sometimes with Uber. Like, like how do I explain? Each day... I know that right now it's just because my thyroid meds need to be at a lower dosage because I haven't gone and picked those up. I haven't gotten around to going and picking up my meds. I have no way to go do that right now. Ah, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'll have I... to talk with um, McNeil that oh, okay. um, we're probably going to be up in Rogers tomorrow. Mm. Okay. Um, I can see if there's a time that would work possibly to... That would Make be that run for you. That would be great because um, I found out that having your thyroid medication be too high for hypothyroidism can actually cause you weight gain, feeling like you're restless, panicky, tremors, anxiety attacks, and can cause you to yeah. feel like you can't sleep and like uh, as if you you are very very fatigued and exhausted all the time and so this whole entire past week I have been sleeping more than usual and just feel like I just want to curl back up in bed and I'm just exhausted no matter what I do and I'm like why am I feeling like this and I look at my thyroid dosage and realize I have a message from my doctor that says hey your labs came back your thyroid is actually uh, a little more active than it should be so we're lowering your dosage um, and you should probably go grab that and I'm like I should probably go grab that. Uh, yeah, I'll probably. I mean, I still got thyroid medication I can take right now. I'll get around to getting my medication one week later. Why do I feel like shit? <laughs> hey, yeah, Phil. That's how I am with some of my meds, too. I'm just like, 
I didn't realize that thyroid medication could make you feel like fatigue, that your thyroid could make you feel like shit. Like, I didn't realize that was a possibility. And, like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, the thyroid can mess up all kinds of stuff. I also it's didn't, really finicky. Like, I didn't realize that. I also didn't realize that, um, that, like, your hormones and stuff even if they're connected to, like, say, you have ovaries and stuff like that, your hormones are also connected to your thyroid. And I'm like, Nani, the fuck did you say? The, the what? I thought it was just related to getting the uterus stuff taken care of. No, no, see, this also relates to your thyroid issues. What? No, 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 no. And I didn't realize, like, how much stuff is actually interconnected in your body when it comes to your hormones and everything else. And I'm just like, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? I thought it was just, like, one area takes care of one thing, one area takes care of another. Now, I am medically trained. I, I went to medical school, and I took biology and human anatomy. Yeah. And I'm just like... I thought I thought that like this thing covers this thing. Wait, why does the thyroid affect the things that the the, the ovaries would? Well, because both deal with your hormones and pituitary gland and all that stuff. And I'm like, so you're telling me in order for me to feel 100 percent better, I would have to get the thyroid issues also addressed and PCOS issues addressed and uh, insert five different areas of the body addressed and i'm like are you kidding me there's that many things related to one issue like i thought that yeah. this was just like a once and done fix it this way fix it felix kind of thing where you just tap it and it's done and all of a sudden your issues are a little bit better because you found a medical cure-all for one thing and now your medical issues are better and it's like no no see if this is going wrong yeah, this is probably this is probably going wrong too what do you mean well you see if you have these issues with pcos you probably have ibs issues as well because that's connected to that and also your ovary health is connected to your gut health and your gut health is connected to your stomach health and i'm just like oh son of a biscuit yeah. this is bull i can't just fix all of this in one go well no see if you get this fixed you gotta go to a specialist for this issue i gotta go to a specialist for this for that issue yeah and then you gotta go to a specialist for this issue but then you gotta go to a specialist for specifically your gastro stuff are you are you so there's not just one doctor can fix like several issues and it it just be okay no see there's certain doctors for certain things I thought a doctor was a doctor. Like, I, I didn't know there was, like, you have to go to a stomach doctor for your stomach and you have to go to a OBGYN to get your female anatomy taken care of. Like, I'm sorry, you're a doctor and you're going to doctor school for doctor stuff and you're a doctor, but what are you doing? Like, what are you specifically doing to help your patients other than basically be a receptionist and say, well, I found these issues, but I'm going to send you to another person who's more qualified in this area to treat this for you. But you're the person who's supposed to be treating me. Well, yes, that is true. I'm I'm supposed to be, but I'm not qualified to take care of this issue. This person is, however. Yeah. You bitch. <laughs> like, oh, yes, welcome yeah. to America. This is your healthcare system. If you want to get one issue fixed, you're going to go through yeah. like oh, five or six other people. Started. Like... The American and don't get me started on how much insurance rules the medical industry. Like it's like, oh, you have insurance, cool. We'll put you on like a wait list because you have insurance. Oh, you're gonna pay us twenty five grand out of pocket to take care of your health care? We'll put you on top priority because you're paying us to take care of you. Whereas insurance, yeah. we have to wait a bit for you to get taken care of because you know you're not paying us for our time. Your insurance is so we can not do this on our your time. Insurance. Not to mention your insurance policy and determination yeah, like, are the deciding factor on whether you get your necessary care or not. Like just the American healthcare system is a I love America. <laughs> I love America. I love America. I love living I'll, here. <laughs> I'll just say it's a dumpster fire. It it's more than a dumpster fire. The dumpster fire is on fire, but it's it's waving to another dumpster fire that's going down the street screaming, yeah. Hey! I saw you last Tuesday, last Tuesday. I was at the cookout. You are the cookout. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. The <laughs> like, words I would use to describe it, I can't say off street. That that is that is fair. Like uh, the the healthcare in America is basically 
you you take American healthcare, you you go over here and you go, mm, yeah, see, we have this and this is great. This is great healthcare. We're, we've got this option, but see, we're going to need a little something from you for this. What do you mean from me? I thought, I thought you gave me an insurance option. So I have insurance so I can, I can take care of this with my insurance payment, right? Yeah, so we're looking at your insurance premium and all this stuff, but you only have this plan, so we're going to need you to pay a very hefty copay for any care past this point. So I have to pay for you to take care of me. Well, I mean, you do have health care, and health care will cover like maybe 80% of your uh, your deductible, but you got to pay the rest of it out of pocket. But what if I can't? Oh, if you can't, you want to reschedule when you can? But but if I reschedule, it'll be like six weeks to six months before I can get in. Yeah, that's not a that's not a us concern. That's that's a that's a you concern. Like we don't we don't care if we're treating you or not. Like you you can get treated when you get treated. We'll we'll treat you whenever you can afford it. Yeah, that's great. But until then, you know, I guess I guess you're kind of on a waiting list, aren't you? But I need this healthcare now. I need to fix this problem now. Yeah. This is this is super very. Like I could have diabetes and you're you're not gonna treat me? Yeah, see, diabetes is terrible. And that's that's like horrible. No one should have that. And yes, we could prescribe medication for your diabetes, but you know, if you're not able to afford the appointment to where we can do that, well then I guess you just you just don't get that medication, do you? So yeah, there's no like, way I'm you can fighting with the prime. Like, Sorry. there's, like, no way you could work around this and just, like, you know, work out a way where you could give me the life-saving medication? Yeah, so it turns out your insurance isn't going to fully cover your diabetes medication. Cool. How, how much is it out of pocket? Oh, you know, just $500. For what? For, you know, one vial of insulin yeah. that costs us, like, $25 to make. Like, it's it's ridiculous. I'm not diabetic, but I have friends that are, and I've dealt with relatives who are diabetic, and it's just, it's ridiculous right. on it's what, ridiculous. like, yeah. what people get put through for, like, basic health care. It's like, oh, yeah, people, let's go to America. America's great. We love America. Freedom, yeah. And then you, you people living in America. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you say freedom? Did you say that you wanted to move here? Do you... Do you need a mental wellness check? You're probably going to be on a six to eight week, like, um, wait list here. But do you need, like, a mental check here? You want to move to America? Why? Like, do you realize we don't want foreigners in our country? We try and kick people out of the country. We don't want disabled people to have rights. We don't want women to have rights. We don't have want, like, anyone who's gay or trans to have rights. Do you, do you, do you want to move here? Well, I mean, it's better than our country that's in a war zone right now. Have you seen half of America right now? The schools are a war zone. No, like, no hate on our American education system, but I feel sorry for my cousin who has a three-year-old that's in school. Like, I fear for that child not coming home. Here we have the great options to save your life. Are you on trauma team platinum N no i see well we can still provide you care but you'll be on a wait list for now but i have a bullet in my lung uh you can pay a large sum of money to skip the line <laughs> yeah that's that's a that's a pretty pretty uh yeah that's pretty accurate <laughs> Or in the case of like someone has a bullet in their lung, it's like, yeah, we've got you trauma addressed. We've 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 got you addressed for this, and we're gonna we're gonna get this bullet out. And oh, you couldn't pay us for this, so now here's a giant bill you have to work on paying, but you have to get it paid off at a certain time. Or we're gonna send a tax collection place after you so that you can pay on this on like a debt thing. So I'm going to owe a debt just because you saved my life. What what happened to human rights? Oh, oh, human rights. Right. I forgot. Welcome to America. Uh, what do you mean? Welcome to America. I thought that humans had rights here. Yeah. So um, yeah. about that, we 
we like to claim that we have human rights, but like, you know, <laughs> uh, we, we, we went over this whole bill of rights thing and we, we saw some things we really didn't like about it that they, they did, you know, this freedom of expression. Yeah. We're, we're not really keen on this freedom of expression thing. Cause now we have citizens yeah. that are really not liking being here and want to express themselves about it. And we don't like that. They don't like being here and we got to make sure to censor that because they can't say that they don't like being here because then it makes us look like the bad guys and we're a country that people love to hate <laughs> yeah yeah America loves their human rights as long as the people are cishet white Seems trauma like <laughs> oh jeez trauma team will accept a kidney and some chrome as pay for that long Jesus Christ <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're not wrong. Only... My cane, I need my cane to work. Is your cane made out of chrome? Yes. Well, congratulations, you just paid for your surgery. Huh? But I need my cane. Oh, no, no, no. See, you didn't have enough collateral or payment for this. So we, we went ahead and like, you know, just kind of, uh, we, we took the payment out of your cane. But I need my cane. No, you don't. You don't need a. You don't need a mobility aid in America. Why would you need an ability, a mobility ma aid or a mobility accessibility in any root, any establishment? Right. <laughs> or like I, I, I saw a Facebook reel earlier today that was somebody in a manual wheelchair trying to get up a really steep incline handicap accessible ramp that evidently hadn't been designed with Very any well. consultation from any actual wheelchair user. Yeah, whenever I was recovering it's, from... Um, it was like a 20 degree angle. Jesus Christ. Whenever I was recovering yeah. from my fistula surgery, um, right after like getting the staples and stuff out and I was still recovering and couldn't really walk very well, I didn't have my walker with me, so they put me in a wheelchair. So I was trying to move this wheelchair so I could, like, not have to wait on the person doing the transit to come get me. I was trying to roll myself in a manual wheelchair, like, with my arms, still oh, recovering from surgery. Awful. And I'm just I like... I do that for a year. I, I was like, okay, so I have no upper body strength, and I'm having to rely on my arms and pushing my own weight. Okay, I can max bench press 70. I am not 70 pounds here. Uh, there's a problem, okay? Yeah. They they do not make wheelchairs easier to navigate, nor do they make them easy to control, because you're sitting there like, I can do this, I can... Okay, I, why is this physically exhausting? Why am I so heavy? Yeah. Oh my god, why is this so much work? I am never taking wheelchair users for calluses. granted. Like... I am never taking wheelchair users, like, for granted, ever. Like, especially the manual yeah. ones. I'm never taking what they can do and how they get themselves around in a wheelchair for granted. Because that takes an immense amount of upper body strength to move yourself in a wheelchair. Like, yeah. I, I just... Being in that position and having to do that, I was just like, okay, so wheelchair is not as um, easy as you think it is, okay? Wheelchair is super hard, okay? Wheelchair is not easy to move around in. People may make it look like it is, but that's because they've yeah. had time, experience, and actual ability to adjust themselves and get better at it over time. Yeah, like, I, I can make it look easy, but, like, realistically, I can't tell you how many times I've bashed my knuckles on corners or how many times I've had my hands start bleeding from, like, the calluses that I build up from pushing myself around. I just, I, I cannot imagine having to do that for, like, five years, let alone 18 years of your life kind of thing. Like, people that have had to use a wheelchair yeah. their entire life... I could not imagine, like, every year that you're developing or getting larger as a person because you're growing and having to adjust for that weight gain and, like, continuously have to build up the muscle over the years. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it is uh, kind of intimidating because I'm just like, look, they can move their own weight in that wheelchair, okay? Let alone have the upper body strength to do that. 
they could toss me if they really wanted to. Like they they could look at me and go, "You weigh less than my wheelchair. Come here." <laughs> Just yeah. yeet. Why am I being yeeted? It's throw short person day. Oh fuck you. <laughs> oh no. My mom's yeah, had hers for six or seven months. Thing. And she's still learning to use it. Yeah. What were you yeah, saying? It's definitely rough. Well, just over here going, you know, I, I thought maybe a wheelchair would be a lot easier than I, I thought it would be, but no, it is not. I reconsider, I reconsider, <laughs> give me the crutches. <laughs> yeah, no. As soon as I was physically capable, I got back on a cane. Like, canes, I don't like using them. I do use one occasionally, but I don't like using it because it makes me feel like people are going to look at me and judge me. Like, I, I get this uh, ableist kind of mindset because of how my mom was. I'm just like, I don't need to use my cane. I don't need to use my cane because people are going to look at me and judge me because I'm 30. I'm using a cane. And people are going to think, why are you using a cane? Your legs work. Like, okay, well, what about the elderly person that's 80 years old using a cane? Well, they're old. My body's old. Leave me alone. Yeah. Like, like, I have a friend I'm that uses. I walk with a cane. Like, I have a friend that uses crutches, and we had to call him Gohan because he's faster than anyone I know with working legs. That's fair. Um, <laughs> for me personally, that. um, I've used a wheelchair. I didn't like it. Um, it was it was frustrating because I realized how incredibly upper body strength I lack. Like, I realized how much upper body strength I lack, and it is terrifying, because I'm like, well, I'm never going to survive an apocalypse if I'm bound in a wheelchair. Cool. Awesome. Push me down the flight of stairs, please. Uh, like, like bad joke aside, um, I've used a walker. I used a walker this year for two months to relearn how to walk and do all that stuff, because healing from surgery. And while using a walker, it was incredibly frustrating. Because I'm having to lug this four quadruped thing around with me, leaning over it and trying to move it while I'm trying to walk. And I'm just going, mm, mm, I want to be faster. This is so slow. Like, you don't understand how slow it is to move yourself with a walker. You, you are taking longer than you normally take. Like, if you're a slow walker, you're taking double that rate, okay? You're, you're, you're like if someone's grandma decided to, you know, take a sick day and walk around a store and is, is, like, is like slowly slower than slow. Like, they're like, I see they got a clearance on a, on a dish, so can, can you can you hear me that over there? No, 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 not that one. It's on the top shelf, honey. It's on the top shelf. Oh, I, 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 I don't know if you should be reaching for that. No, no, I, I got this. Where are you going to put it? You got a walker. I'll pull it. In my basket. In your basket. You're going to put it in your basket. I have a basket. That is a very small basket, lady. It does not matter what the size is. It's a good size. It doesn't matter what your size is. You just got to use it. Okay. Okay, Grandma. Um, We're, we're going to ignore the fact that many people are going to take that way out of context. Things Grandma Pyro says. It doesn't matter what the size is. You can still use it. <laughs> Granny! <laughs> no one is allowing them to ever go near anybody. I had them like that once. <sighs> Already taking it out of context. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. No matter what happens. Oh. Another thing to take out of context. No, no. Just put it in. Granny? In the basket, Sonny. Oh, oh, Jesus! I I've worked too long here. I'm I'm taking a rest day. This this isn't my day to work here. I'm I'm sorry, Granny. I just gotta I just gotta like you know um I 
I've had a long day. I've had a very long day. <laughs> I can socialize, can you? I can socialize. Wait, there was context? Ouch. Ouch. Oof. Sorry. Oof. No, I it's fine. Uh, it's okay. Just put it in, in the basket. You mean the basket, right? Yes. Jesus. Their mouth looks so funny. I don't know, just... Uh. And when I use a cane, I just... I feel like I'm too slow. You're lost. 